How's everybody doing? I hope all is well. The yard office. So I just want to quickly share with you some details on the yard office and how I went about it. These two photos I took of Surrey Rail Link in New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada. It was still Southern Rail. I'm actually functioning as Surrey Rail Link, but some of the signage and some of the liveries on the locomotives were still painted in Southern Rail with the white red stripe there on the SD38 there. And you see the new lines had Washington logo on some of these other locomotives. Anyway, this building here and this one were the two that inspired me to build this. This is uh, a yard office. It will be on my layout with a combination shop and or sort of storage area. And what I did was I used Plastistruct, Plastruct and Evergreen models. I love this stuff for scratch building. It's a modeler's dream if you've got that product. And a lot of hobby shops still carry it. So what I did was is I basically used the corrugated siding HO scale, number 91509 for HO scale used for the roof, for the sliding doors, and the shed lean-to type roofs. And then on the siding here is just, I mean, that might even be O scale. I'm not really sure. I can't remember now. I've got so many pieces lying around in the box that I use. So that's sort of a clapboard siding. Um, the screen for the gate and the window here is by BLMA number 4210 chain link fence. This is really nice stuff. I don't know if you can still get it anymore. And I heard Atlas bought out BLMA, but anyway, that's what I used for that. And then I added a little potbelly stove pipe there. That little parts from, you know, a kit box of parts probably from some double O. I got a lot of double O British stuff from my British modeling days back in the day. The eave trough here, our gutter is just small scale I-beam with the bottom flanges cut off. And there's more of that corrugated siding. I use some on here as well, the fascia. And then there's a double door piece that I found in the bottom of the box, I put that in. And then there's a downspout pipe just from doweling. And on this side, which faces against the backdrop or the layout that you don't see, I didn't do a whole lot. I added the brass rod handle there and a sliding door there. I want to be able to see through, like right through where the track is and there's a switch stand just past there. And Anyway, so pretty happy with that. And then the roof pops off so I can get in to paint it and add other details. Uh, I might want to add, you know, like the actual pot belly stove in there. If you see it through the open door, there's a little office table there. And anyway, it gives you the option to, to uh, you know, add more details and paint inside. It's probably easier just to glue the roof on, but I went to the extra work to make that like convertible, right? So yeah, there it is, the yard office type shop for the layout. And I'll show at the end another clip I'll add in, I'll show it in place. Okay, just one other thing I want to talk about, a few other details that have to do with the yard office is the guardrails and some of the posts. I'll tell you how I quickly made those. So I used the same corrugated siding, but I just cut either two ribs or three depending on what you want right like if you want a wider strip you can use three anyway this stuff is fantastic for that galvanized you know rural kind of highway fencing i made this out of these little posts out of 1 16th rod i just cut them and just make a mark on the wood and then just lay the pipe across snip with a knife just cut a whole pile of those up and then i used for this little backing plate, which really gives a really good glue point. This is a must to do this, right? It's like a, a, a channel and it glues in fast and it's strong. It's not coming off. Is uh, Plastruck 90532 
three thirty second two by four millimeter styrene plastic. So I made a whole whack of these. All right, and then they just get glued on, spaced out to whatever you like on the back. And like, talk about strong. Like I've already whacked this thing, and you know, like they don't come off. Like if they're put on properly, it's really good glue. I use this as well for good reason. It's low odor, lower than the Tamiya, which I can't stand because it gives me a headache. This stuff here is actually designed for this. So. Works really well. And then last night I just whipped up this gate. Like I figured I needed a gate for the yard office. So this little pipe swing gate, which are quite common out here in Langley. You see them at the parks and the schools. Really like the way that turned out. Okay, so let's go have a look on the layout and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the yard office in place. And then you can also see the guardrail, the gate. There's a two rib section here for this side of the parking lot. And then this three rail or three rib goes down to about here and then it transitions into a two rib and then ends down here. So that's the look that I wanted to go with and I think it's working out pretty good. And then the gate, actually this pin comes out like so and it swings open. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way that looks and the way it's mounted just in closing. I want to tell you that none of it's glued in place, right? Uh, this whole layout is built on 3 16th mahogany. And then what I do is for sound deadening, I glue foam strips or blocks underneath the track with PL300. After all the switch machines and all your GAC is set up underneath the layout. The reason why I do that is for a couple of reasons. One, it's very, very lightweight. Makes for a lightweight module and sturdy. The frame, the actual frame is uh, 5 eighths or 3 quarter ply. And the valance is also skinned with mahogany. And when I drill into it, it holds the hole. It's far more rigid. So this all slides out, right? It's all fits, pressure fits, right? All the railing, everything comes out. So I can just pull it out to paint now once it's all fit and ready to go in. And then I can just go to the paint shop, paint it all up, weather it up, and then just put it all in place. Um, I'm not going to actually glue this railing. I'm just going to leave it pressure fitted. And it's pretty tight anyway. So if you try to do that with foam, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty. I know there's ways around it. And foam is a great medium to do modules as well. Uh, you can do things that you can't do with plywood. Well, you can, but with great difficulty. Foam, you can just carve into it. You can carve a ditch, right? With blue foam, an inch thick or whatever you want to use, you can carve into it, right? But with the 3 laminate board, you got a thin layer. So when you put your switch machines... Um, underneath, right, you get good leverage. You don't have to transit a large depth to throw a switch. That was part of the reason why I chose to go with the thin board as well. And, uh, and even if there is a little bit of instability, so what? It's a short line. Tracks are not totally level and straight anyway. Uh, and then I guess I should point this out right here. Um, this is one of my switch machines. I just scratch built these. They're RC cable switches and I'll do another episode and show you what I made under there and how I use uh, that switch to throw the switch here and then power route the frog. Okay, thanks for watching the yard office.